Okay, on today's video, we're going to do something a little different this time. If this video looks a little bit different uh, than some of my other ones uh, that I've done, it's because the camera I'm using is totally different. Um, tonight, we're recording this one here on a professional quality. This is a, a broadcast quality uh, Sony camera that was uh, a very expensive camera. This is actually a tape based high definition camera. Normally I shoot using a basic little uh, consumer handy cam. And I just wanted to give you guys a, a look at the difference in the quality between the, the two cameras. So this one here is actually a professional uh, tape based HDV camera. So on this one we're gonna, this video we're going to look at this techniques cassette deck that I showed you on a an earlier video here and um, well as you can see I remember I said this thing was full of circuit boards well here's the mechanism on this one here we looked at the TIAC unit uh, on the, the last videos and how simplified it was here is the techniques unit and I think you'll agree that the uh, the guts on this is just there's lots going on in here you've got all these individual boards you've got the fluorescent display this was a really great deck I don't know what's wrong with this one but we're gonna plug it in here and we're gonna see what this one's up to again this is a deck that hasn't been used in many many years and I'm now interested in seeing whether we can actually get this one to work and since I haven't used this tape based camera in a while, I figured I'd better uh, get some use out of it because one of the worst things you can do for any electronic devices is to uh, let them sit and not be used. So here we go. Got the camera going here. Got the uh, tape deck going. It's got power. The display is lighting up. That, all, that part all works. And I already hear something happening here. It's trying to uh, trying to go into record. The timer was set. Let's just see whether this thing opens. Well, it does. We're going to take the tape door off so we can investigate and see exactly what is or what is not working on this. So I'm just going to close the cassette compartment, and I believe there's probably some switches in here, just like the uh, just like the last one that have to be engaged in order for the mechanism to operate. So we'll just engage these switches and see whether the unit goes into the different modes of operation. So fast forward is working. Rewind is working. Nope. Rewind is working. Yep. How about play? Uh, play is not working. So now we know where the problem lies on this. It won't go into play. The head won't lift. It tries. Capstan shaft is turning, but the head doesn't lift. So in this mechanism, I believe it's a it's a cam system like the uh, like the TAC. It's a motor driven system to raise and lower the heads. And it's not raising and lowering the head so that's what we need to investigate and see why it's not it could be something as simple as a belt but as you can see from this entire mechanism here this is going to be a real fun unit to, to uh, take this unit apart and see what's going on inside here but uh, that's what we're going to do we're going to tear this thing down and we're going to see why this unit isn't working now as you can see from the bottom of this unit there's no real way to get at the mechanism. It looks like a couple screws on the bottom here we can pull out and that will uh, allow me to access the mechanism if we need to go that far. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a kind of a close look at this mechanism and see what I need to tear down because there's, there's a lot of, I don't know if you can see this, but there's ribbon cables and everything on here. These uh, units were really not very well designed as far as servicing goes. 
the TAC that I showed you um, was probably a better quality tape deck than this one and it's relatively easy to service. This one here, very, 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 very complicated. So we'll start by, I'm just gonna examine the diamond, shut the camera off for a minute while I actually stare at this thing and see the best way to tear this thing apart. Well, I've had a chance to actually look at this thing and see what's going on with it and it doesn't look to be that serious. It appears to be that we've got a slipping belt. If I close down the tape compartment Inside this chassis here, see if I can frame this up for you. I don't have a large screen on this uh, this camera, so it's tough to see. Um, this camera has component outputs. My monitor does have component inputs, but I, I don't have the cable handy to plug it in. But th this gear here, that I'm gonna point out here, this is the gear that, is, that drives, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a gear in here that drives the cassette, the heads. If I press the play button, for example, and I just flip this little gear slightly, it goes into play. So we have a slipping belt. And does it play? Well, I've got a cassette tape on here now. I got some headphones plugged in. And I would say that there's music Yes. We have music. Very nice fluorescent display. I would have to say, just from listening to this music on this with the headphones off camera here, that uh, this has got to be one of the best cassette deck sounds I've ever heard. I know that the I know that the that the um, the T Act machine that I'm going to get the caption belt for also has a very good sound, but there was something about this deck here, and this this was a very expensive deck. This deck was well over a thousand dollars I believe I was a I forget exactly how much I paid for it but it was a lot of money and I bought it wholesale so the retail price will be a lot higher than that but this was a very expensive deck it's all direct drive the caps and motors direct drive the real motors are direct drive it's a little belt drive that drives that cam that lifts and lowers the head it appears that that's the only problem with this is we got a belt that's slipping but it's only a two-head deck, but the sound quality is unbelievable. I'm just listening to this with headphones on now, and uh, the sound quality is um, is fantastic. And part of that is because of the noise reduction. This unit features DBX noise reduction, which virtually eliminates the tape hiss. There is no tape hiss. It's a two-to-one companding. It compresses the sound so that it can record everything at a high level above the noise floor and then on playback it expands the sound. It's a compounding system. It's not compatible. You cannot play tapes that are recorded in DBX on a, uh, a tape deck that does not have DBX on it. And that's one of the reasons I want to get this, get this working is because I have literally hundreds and hundreds of tapes that I mixed back in the 80s that were all uh, that I professionally mixed um, together, and I did that when I was in broadcast and had access to uh, mixers and a good library of music. Um, so I've got literally hundreds of tapes that are all mixed and they're all recorded in DBX. So I kind of want to have my DBX decks working. That's what kind of got me into this project of restoring these things. But now I see what the problem is. is I press stop. I can hear the motor running. But until I actually go and flip that little gear, it's slipping. So now I have to disassemble this thing. I have, I have no idea where that motor is that I have to get at. It's obviously, hmm, that's not supposed to do that. That was after I, I accidentally hit the, uh, 
the play button and then just hit the power button off because it didn't it didn't load and it despooled some of my tape but that's okay it didn't damage it in any way um yeah this was recorded in 1986 multi-mix i got a bunch of these tapes that i've recorded and i got all the song titles and everything on here anyway um i'm just gonna tear down this mechanism just a little bit take this cover plate off here and see if i can spot that um belt now panasonic were pretty good and techniques are pretty good they identify that they the, the screws that you need to take out are identified as being red so we'll remove the red screws and maybe if I remove the red screws, I'll be able to get this mechanism out enough that I can see the belt that I need to replace. So we're going to pull the front bezel off of the machine as well. And hopefully I don't have to disassemble this thing too far because as you can see with all of the... Um, all the electronics on this thing, all these circuit boards and stuff, it's going to be a real nightmare to get this thing apart and back together. Thinking probably these screws here, up here and down here, have to come out. For the record, this is an RSM275X. Just a ton of wires in this thing. Whoops, there, that just came out. That's better. Actually, there's a little more slack now that I've removed some of these wire clips. There's a little more slack in these wires and they lift out. Everything's all clipped in place. If I take out some of these wire clips, I may be able to lift this mechanism out without uh, too much of a headache. Oh, there we go. You can get access to the circuit boards. A lot of these units, uh, even when you took the bottom off it, there was another cover below it. But this one here, you have access to the bottom of the board. And I should be able to pop the front panel should pop off on this thing, I think. Just as I thought, when all the screws come off on this thing, the front panel lifts off quite easy. It's going to pull off the recording level controls and the front panel will lift off like that and the glass for the for the um, the filter for the fluorescent display. We'll just put that out of the way so that it doesn't get damaged and voila! The mechanism lifts out as a complete mechanism. Now it doesn't look as scary as it did before. Power switch unplugs too from the main power switch. And one little cord unplugged here. And that just goes up to there. This power cord here goes up to there. That doesn't look so bad now. Now that we've got it apart. Okay, look at this. Look at this beautiful motor. Wow, look at that. I'm going to zoom this camera. And I got this set on manual zoom so I can zoom it manually here. 
But uh, look at that beauty. Whew. Direct drive. That's the capstan motor. It's a three-phase brushless slotless motor. There's um, another motor over here. And there's another motor up here. One of them is going to be the real drive motor. And one of them is going to be the loading motor that operates this mechanism through a belt, I'm sure. So we're just going to figure out which one's which. There's This is the... Uh, this is the gear I'm telling you, I was telling you about over here. Oh, let me just zoom the camera back a bit. Can't see it with my uh, hand in the way. This is the, this is the gear that operates the cam up and down, moves the heads up and down. See, and that is driven by a motor, but which one? One of these motors drives this. I just have to see which one it is. I guess we can always apply power to it and put it through the motions. Or maybe we can't with it uh, unplugged. Oh, I've got a couple of plugs that have fallen out here. i got to put them back in. I want to run the mechanism through its motions just to see which one of these motors actually drives this gear. Okay, I've got it going now. So then I just have to see which one of these motors is trying to drive. Is it this one? Is it this one down here? It's that one. Yeah. Nope, it's not. It's the real drive motor. So the one that is slipping is going to be... Oh, it's going to be fun to get at. It's right in the middle of the chassis. But I'm sure we will find it. Just going to figure out a way to make the tape compartment open now that it's apart. So here's the belt that needs to be replaced here. There's a little pulley on the top here and the belt wraps around this motor. I think it's over here. Yeah, this motor is over here. This is the belt that I need to replace on this unit. It, um, yeah, it could be a bit of a challenge. Looks like I have to take a few pieces off to get at it just from where they buried it, which is a kind of a dumb place. The belt's not broken, it's just slipping. And I, I'm almost wondering if I could put some of my fancy um, belt slipping compound on to prevent the belt from slipping. If I press the, you can see if I just flick it by hand, oh, I guess you can't see that because the camera is not showing it now, but if I, just flick it by hand slightly. It uh, it does uh, move, so I'm thinking I might be able to just get by with putting some of my uh, anti-slipping compound on this belt because getting into this thing to replace this belt, it's in behind this chassis, and then there's another mechanism in behind here. 
and I don't know how easy it's going to be to get in here. If I can get the switch assembly out, but the switch assembly is part of this back chassis. This is all one piece. I'm just looking at this, and this 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 whole back plane here is one piece, and then the sub assembly is screwed on with all the little gears and wheels and stuff in here, which means that this could be quite the um, quite the job to change that little belt that hasn't broken. It's just it's just slipping. So what I'm thinking I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try, I've got some uh, anti-slipping uh, compound and I'm going to try putting some of that on the belt and see whether it's not, it's it's uh, not rubber renew, it's a, it's a belt uh, anti-slipping compound that I've got and uh, basically it just coats the uh, the belt, it's kind of almost like a rosin that uh, that increases its um, its tension or it's gripping ability. I'm going to try just putting a little bit of that on the belt and see whether that will make the mechanism work without actually having to tear the whole thing into a zillion pieces. So I put a little bit of a, a rosin type of anti-slipping compound on and as you can see see that? It's working. We'll just zoom the camera in a little bit closer and you can see I'm going through all the modes and that's all it took just a little bit of, of compound to clean off the shine from the belt and uh, this unit is once again So this unit, if we count all the motors in this thing, this has got the capstan motor, it has got a motor for fast forward and rewind, which is the same motor it uses for, for threading the tape. You can see now, I got so much tension on here, and there's so much grip now that if I stop this pulley from turning, it actually will stop the motor. So we've got plenty of torque now. This belt's never going to slip again. Um, that's all it took. And this is the stuff I used. This is just, uh, this is the same stuff I used for soldering. Right, just just no clean rosin flux. It's used for uh, prepping wires and stuff for uh, soldering. It works like magic on belts that are not melted completely. We've got a belt that's still got um, pretty good elasticity to it but it's just getting a bit shiny from age and it doesn't want to grip the pulley uh, this can save your bacon as opposed to spending I mean I'd probably for me it would probably take me a good hour or more to tear this mechanism apart to uh, replace a belt that has not broken so um, yeah I'm gonna put this thing back together and uh, I'll have a tape deck that's working again. So we just put this together in the reverse order it came apart. Just put the top plate back on. And there's a couple screws in the front and a couple screws in the top to hold this top plate piece back on. couple more screws to go in the front here So this lever had slipped out and I just have to right out of here and I just had to put it back in so that when it when you press this in it lifts up this catch to open the tape door. So now that that's back in place this is the power uh, lever and it attaches this back end of this attaches to the main power button down in the back here. So it should be able to just take the deck and just drop it back in place.
line up the power switch. There we go. We'll reattach the plug that goes to the auto record auto play uh, switch so when the power comes on it goes either into record or play mode there we go our eject button is working remember that there was four screws that we put in to hold down the chassis so we'll put those four screws in now the red ones so here's what this great fluorescent display looks like and with the cover on it it looks like that this is just a really nice looking display on this, this um, cassette deck. Front cover slides on like that. Couple more screws in the top to hold the top in place. It actually goes together quite easy. Okay, we've got the uh, Record level control. It's keyed so it only goes on uh, one way. And the unit is now ready to test. So since I don't have, I guess I could plug it into my, my TV speakers in here, but uh, I can't play this music for you guys anyway because YouTube will get upset with me. But we'll just put the, uh, the front cover back on. The glass panel and just snaps on like that okay I'll put my my famous tape back in here and enjoy some music and there you go don't want to play that for more than a couple minutes a few seconds because you know how they uh, get annoyed with that but uh, yeah everything's working on here fast forward Rewind, play, pause, everything's working. So there you go. That's the inside of my techniques. It's a direct drive, three motor, AX head, microprocessor, logic control. It's got all the bells and whistles. The most important one of all dbx i have another dbx deck that i'm going to haul out to i have another techniques one that i don't know if it works or not and i'm going to haul that out and service that too tuck all these wires back in place here put the top cover on this thing and uh So here's my tape deck back together again. I'm just going to give you a quick rundown. I've, I just got this thing queued up here. This is what I mean when I've got all these these great tapes. Now I've just got through a TV speaker, so it's obviously not going to sound very good. But this is what I've done with all my tapes over the years when I made all these tapes. Everything's all mixed together. You'll hear. You can hear the difference in the sound when you turn off the DBX. So that's, um, that's a quick sample of how my tapes were all mixed back in the 80s when I had access to um, proper mixing equipment. I, um, I did some DJ work there and uh, had, had a couple turntables and mixers and recorders and everything was all done in a studio environment. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the uh, repair of this Techniques Classic uh, cassette deck and uh, we'll see you in the next one next video will be the finish up of the TAC I'm going to get some parts for it maybe tomorrow and we'll get it up and running but uh, hope you enjoyed this one see this is another great piece of equipment and this thing's heavy like this tape deck here this thing weighs probably 20 pounds but you saw what was inside it and that's why it's as heavy as it is uh, anyway uh, we'll see you in the next one thanks for watching